to this tough, this mean culture that we enforce uh, among males. We it's okay for them to have ex express themselves when they're angry, but when they express feelings of sadness, we're labeling them and giving them uh, these negative label labels that imply that they are weak. But we'll get into that uh, later. So anyway, so what brought up this topic? Why are we talking about this today? So. For the past five years, no joke, my son has cried every day since birth. No joke, right? So I, put, I was talking to the folks on Facebook. I said, hey, is anybody else, is this normal? Has anybody else experienced this? Now, I was hoping I wasn't the only one out there going through this, and maybe someone could tell me, oh, it's just a phase. He'll outgrow it. But uh, I was met with a lot of people encouraging me to whoop him physically discipline him now personally i as long as it's, it's not abusive i personally don't have um any negative opinions about about corporal punishment as long as it's not being used to be abusive and i've grown up uh I've, I, when i was a child i, I was disciplined I got whoopings, and I'm sure everyone here at this table received a butt whooping at some point in their life. Am I right? No, right? I didn't. No, you yeah. didn't. Okay. So, like I said, we have some diverse opinions here. So, anyways. <laughs> okay. Well, we're looking forward to hearing everybody's voice today, and I, I really like to get your insight as well. Moving forward. At least half of the people who commented, they did say, I need to whoop him. But when I begin to think critically about the situation, like, you know what? A child who cries every day, and I'm sure if I began to whoop him or pop him or try to discipline him physically, that would probably make the situation worse, right? If he's doing it every day. And the question of the day is, every issue that we're experiencing with our child, every uh, behavior that they're displaying that's undesirable, should it be serious underlying issues? We're meeting these serious underlying issues with the belt. So let's go into the topic here. So we have Ono here who commented, <laughs> and you said do not listen to these people with that slave mentality. I need you to explain oh, yourself. <laughs> I think I was the first to comment, maybe. Uh, I don't know. I just seen it right away. And, you know, I come from a spiritual background. I come from a background where I'm teaching women to love themselves effectively. So in my line of work, I teach them how to authentically look at themselves. And we do a lot with science. We do a lot with, you know, just getting back to their birth origin, their place of origination. And with that, um, I just feel that there's deeper meanings to our being, you know, and I know that my comment was what the first question I asked is what's his sign, you know, and not everybody would agree with that. Not everybody, but it's just, you know, that's just the world I live in. So I wanted to come from a different place because we always come with the, pl from the place of, you know, corporal punishment, whoopings and everything. And it was like, well, wait a minute. Maybe there is something underlying going on. Yeah. You know, maybe there's something because I think one thing that fumes me is adults really don't realize that children deal with human. We, they deal with human emotions as well. I remember this past summer being at a birthday party for, for kids and my son was frustrated. And so he was all mad and walking around the party. And I'm like, you know, what's wrong, son? Did something frustrate you? And one of the mothers was like, I wish he would have a reason to be frustrated. I wish my kid would get frustrated. It's like, well, what do you think children deal with every day? You know, just because we go to work and we have to work a nine to five and we have to worry about bills. That doesn't mean that children aren't dealing with the same kind of emotions. They have to go to school and deal with different children from different races, from different backgrounds. That, you know, that's emotionally heavy. And you know what? I th I believe a lot of mothers or parents, you know, they're meeting the issues with the belt because they are short. It takes a lot of time to invest and figure yes. out what's going on with your child and teach them how to get through or cope with what, whatever the issue it's is. It's another full-time right? job. So a lot of times <laughs> you're, you are disciplining your child out of frustration. So Maggie, why don't you go ahead and speak on 
speak on that. Okay, because you said something to me. You said um, when we when we physically when we physically discipline our children, what we what we're doing is we're not teaching them. Um, you, well, you communication, say, maybe. Yes, you. Mm-hmm. Yes, we're not teaching them how to, uh, you know, like communicate effectively and work through their emotions. But you said they don't learn negotiating skills. So I want mm-hmm. you to explain that to us. Right. 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 And we're leading we're leading that example. And if we can't figure out the problem ourselves and we resort to methods that are aggressive and physical, they'll begin that'll be their go to method as well as their addressing and solving problems, right? So thank you. So moving moving forward in the conversation here. Miss Yavanka, you are a minority health specialist. Well, not specialist, advocate, right? I am. Yes. So tell us, what do you know about, what I said earlier earlier was, I believe a lot of mental health issues are being addressed with the belt. Would you agree with that? Well, you know what, one of the things that we do know about our young people is that um, they haven't quite developed their frontal lobe. So their thought processes aren't developed. So that ability for them to actually do something, they'll say, um, I don't know. Or they do something that's stupid and you're like, mm. why would you do that? And they're like, I don't know. Because they really don't know. And so when you're trying to have a reasonable explanation for growth and development, you know, every child grows at a different rate. And so, um, but we do know that developmentally for their brain that those thought processes don't really kick in until they're 21 years old. So one of the reasons that we see so many children that are involved in the criminal justice system, besides the fact that they're lead poisoned, um, that we see so many that are involved in the criminal justice system is because the system asks you to be within a structure and they're not structured yet. So you have young people who have not developed those reasoning skills that we're saying, well, you know, you shouldn't have done that. But they don't even understand that whole concept yet. And I, I think that that's one of the things that happens um, to our community, particularly when we took black educators out of the classroom. Um, I think that really disproportionately impacted because we were looking at someone else's view on how to rear our children and how they should be treated in the classroom. And so I'll be 52 years old this year. So for me, you know, the dynamics that take place in the classroom now and how children are disproportionately, particularly African-American boys, are disproportionately um, punished um, is because they don't have African-American men in the classroom with them or don't have competent African-American women that are there in those classrooms with them. White women, no matter how much you want to slice it, cannot understand the dynamics that are going on with young black men. And, you know, I have Miss Michelle and I have Norman here on on both ends of the mics. So jump in at any point. But I do have a question going back to Maggie really quickly here. Um, and, well, let me let me start with you, uh, Michelle. You mentioned something to me while we were having our pre-show discussion that um, in the past, uh, school counselors, school therapists have not had a presence within the school. Can you tell me? Could you make? Can you glue that in this conversation? Um, yes, I know. Growing up, um, there was always a school counselor there that was available, you know, for us. But our, my extent and my knowledge of what the school counselor did was basically when you did your test scores, they were there to let you know whether or not how you scored on the test, if you qualified for IEP or special education. 
never once thought of a member of school counselor of Delvin. I believe that's been that's a thing across the board. You know, in order to get these positions in these school systems as a counselor, you have to have a certain degree. So surely you went to school and you got the education in the background to know how to communicate with these kids to find out what's really going on at home. But that's something that's not discussed. That's not something that is um, oftentimes offered to children when they come when you're in school. I don't ever remember that being offered. Um, I remember seeing a school counselor about my school schedule mm -hmm. or about uh, test scores right. or about moving on to the next level after school, but never anything uh, as far as how I was doing about me emotionally. I